Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised, and greatly to be praised, Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised, and greatly to be praised, Father, you reign. Join me. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised, greatly to be praised, Father, you reign. Just two simple lines or three lines. Great are you, Lord, greatly to be praised, greatly to be praised, Father, you reign. One more time. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised, greatly to be praised, Father, you reign. Ibu chuku, ibu gemadwe, ibu chuku, ibu gemadwe, akana gwaria ibu chime. Ibu chuku, ibu gemadwe. Ibu chuku, ibu gemadwe. Ibu chuku, ibu gemadwe. Akane nyemwa ibu chime. Ibu chuku. Ibu gemadwe, come on. Ibu chuku, ibu gemadwe. Akane nyemwa ibu chime. Ibu chuku, ibu gemadwe. Ibu chuku, ibu gemadwe. Abu chuku. Abu gemadwe, akana gore ibu chime, ibu chuku, ibu gemadwe. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven above. Your Holy Spirit is under truth. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven above. Your Holy Spirit is on the throne. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. Holy Spirit, we say good morning. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we can do nothing without you. Once again, we implore the power in the blood of Jesus. Once again, we activate the power in the blood of Jesus. In Revelation 12, 11, it says, We overcame him, we overcame the devil. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. This morning, Lord, we activate the blood vigorously. This morning, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus all over me, all over where I am, all over the whole environment. Let the blood protect me. Let the blood shield me because I can do nothing without the blood. I can do nothing unless the blood covers me. My Father and my God, I hide behind the cross. And this morning also, I command every satanic activity around where I am, ministering this morning with the blood of jesus that they be confounded my father and my god i command every agenda of the wicked 
to be frustrated concerning this conference. My Father and my God, I release the blood of Jesus also to all the places around the world where your children are coming from, watching online. My Lord and my God, everywhere they are, I cover it with the blood of Jesus and I cover all of them with the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus be a shield for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And thank you, Father, for your word. In Jeremiah 33, verse 3, which says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. My Father and my God will call upon you. I, together with your children, who are faithful, for us the new ones, we are saying, Lord, we cannot do nothing without you. Answer us this morning. Let Father Lord declare the path open and let the heavens open concerning this meeting and let the earth conjure together to ensure that this meeting goes the way you want it. I decrease totally and you increase mightily in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. With that, I declare this meeting open in Jesus powerful name with that i say good morning to all of you and i say welcome 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 i've seen so many of the beautiful ones coming so many of the faithful ones coming i see my daughter grace empire i see masha brown i see so many of you and i say god will bless you god will magnify you and um, i saw the compliment that you wrote uh, grace thank you so much thank you so much you know saying that i'm beautiful god bless you god bless you god bless you and for all of you who are coming in thank you so much uh, yes excellent favor thank you i receive the i receive i receive i receive more grace i receive more strength in the name of jesus and for all of you who are the faithful ones coming in over time all these years i love you with the love of god and receive your Holy kisses, all of you. All of you. And for the newcomers, and those who came in last week, and those who came in the week before, you know, just do us the favor of giving us the thumb up sign so that you can receive your holy kiss, so that we know it's your first time. Please, um, we don't, when I use the word we, you all know by now that I'm not the only one that is on board. The Father, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son is with me. And my battalion of angels are right here with me. And we all welcome you. Okay, Sandra, Sandra, uh, Richard, oh, oh, <laughs> Richard, oh, oh, God bless you. Coming in for the first time. Mwah. receive your holy kiss receive your holy kiss god bless you and you may want us do us the favor of telling us where you are watching from where are you watching from beauty hallelujah me god bless you a uh, nice nice esther and on the end receive your holy kiss god bless you and uh, that is Mwale uh, Princess Onyinye Onyinye Amarachi. What a long name. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Masha Brown, for clapping for them. Uh, P P P is it Beauty? Beauty? <laughs> is that Beauty or is that Beauty? Uh, Bayelsa, God bless you. Okay, oh my God, it's the first time. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, and. Um, you're watching from Ghana, uh, Deno, Blem, Blem, Blem Dolphins, Alfits, I think. Uh, God bless you. Uh, Damaris, uh, 11 Q, 11. Woo! God bless you. All of you receive your holy keys. Receive your holy keys. Thank you for coming in. You are Joseph Dennis watching from Cross River State. God bless you. Uh, River State will bless you. God bless you. Mendy's, Mendy Yaz. God bless you. You're watching from Abuja. I just missed your name. But you say you're watching from Abuja. And you're watching from Lagos State. Oh my God. God bless you. All of you that are coming in. God bless you. God bless you. And as you are. 
you know watch you're watching from austria mendy yards god bless you austria will bless you lagos state will bless you uh crossover state will bless you um uh yeah beauty bells are you know uh, by bell bell bells belly <laughs> uh, um, the, the state of lagos will bless you mightily all of you and then um, thank you so much more health and more life my, i receive in the name of jesus god bless you chris osaze god bless you first time watching from delta state as you're woken up this morning when you're watching from oh for two oh for two i believe is a no go stay a no go will bless you darling oh yeah my you know <laughs> God bless you, God bless you. And while you are at it, can you press your share button? Press your share button if you're not a witch. Press your share button if you're not a warlock and begin to invite others to be a partaker of this holy meal. Thank you so much as you press your share button because I know you're not a witch and you're not a warlock. Please press your share button and invite others so they can come in. I know that you did not come online on this platform by chance. You came here because you're directed by the Holy Spirit. You're watching from Kenya. You're watching from Kenya. Kenya will bless you. Kenya will, 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 will yield its good unto you. God bless you. God bless you from Kenya. You're watching from Imo State, land of my, you know, my origin. I'm born and bred in Lagos, but I am probably an Imo light. <laughs> I'm from Imo State. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. God will bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Neka, thank you for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, Asuzu47. God bless you for coming in. And for all of you who have come in so far, I want to say God bless you. God multiply you. God make his face to shine upon all of you. And every mark of lack of favor on you is wiped out now in the name of Jesus. And uh, I am your humble servant, Apostle Dr. Eukarya Anganobi. Yes, the famous um, movie star. I was once a model. I'm still a model, still modeling, fashion modeling, and photography model. I was once a beauty queen. That's what I was actually trying to say. I was Miss IMT years ago, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, just like how Queen Esther in the Bible, you know, we we were once a born, you know, once a, 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 a beauty queen. Yeah. And then, you know, your beauty, your intellect, whatever God has blessed you with, is for you to use to the glory of God. So having been a former beauty queen, a model, still modeling, you know, fashion modeling, and uh, still photography modeling, because you all know that I'm the brand ambassador to Omec Properties and Investment Limited, the real estate giant that will help you acquire a piece of land for you to build your own dream home. So if you were to go on Instagram, on Facebook, and you click, uh, you know, uh, you know, sign on the name at Omec at Omec Properties and Investment Limited. It will take you straight, you know, to our message box. Send us a DM, and we will help you with all the information that you need to acquire a piece of land. We we'll direct you because we have lands in different, you know, parts of Lagos and in different parts of Ogun State, and we will help you as long as you're in Lagos State or you're in Nigeria. Lagos State and Ogo State who will help you. I am the brand ambassador, proudly the brand ambassador. I mean, my contract was renewed again this year. I was a brand ambassador last year, and my contract is renewed because they said I did very well. Okay, yeah. So, apart from being a movie star, I am ordained woman of God. I have gone to different parts of the world to preach the gospel, and uh, this online conference have been on for three years plus next month it will be four years that i have been coming online and i've been preaching the gospel for over 12 years i've been ordained for over 12 years different countries i'm an itinerant preacher itinerant preacher which means i go from place to place as they call me in different churches and organizations to preach the gospel so every monday by the grace of god we come online here to hear what god has to say so i want to say i love all of you for coming in i love all of you for those of you who have pressed your share button and invited someone you know to come in you know to be a partaker of this holy meal and there are so many people thank you grace thank you grace for the roses for the clap for everything for the kisses god bless you thank you so 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 much okay you know so uh, you invite someone you know to come in and be a partaker of this holy meal we hear the word of god here so that we can be equipped you know for our day and our week because it happens every monday 7 a.m you know 
you know what I mean? 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Nigerian time, West African time. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I say I want to, you know, um, uh, go off on the name calling and name, you know, appreciation uh, so that we can go into, you know, the word today proper. And um, if you are with me, say, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm not hearing you. But I know you heard me. And if you heard me, you can write, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Okay? God bless you. So we're diving into the scripture this morning. And we are going to be reading from the King James uh, Version of the Bible. And it's going to be one, you know, verse that we're going to read from uh, a scripture that you are very conversant with. As long as you are a proper Christian and a Bible scholar. And I'm reading from the book of Hosea. Hosea 4, 6. And I believe that some of you who already you know very well was here four six what he says he says my people perish for lack of knowledge my people perish for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou should be no priest to me seeing that thou you know has forgotten the law of thy god you know, I will also forget thy children. Now, we are going to pay particular attention uh, absolutely to the very first line. We say, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to be ministering, teaching, and preaching on the team. Knowledge is ineludible. Ineludible. Like, elude you, you know, something that will bypass you. So, ineludible means that you cannot contravene it. You cannot bypass it. You cannot say, you cannot pass through that way you will not be able to do without it it is inescapable okay like inescapable like inevitable you cannot you know you know circumvent it so knowledge is uncircumventable <laughs> if you want to put it like that so knowledge is ineludible knowledge is ineludible hear me child of god you see <laughs> It is absolutely very evident that we are in a time where knowledge is flying left, right, and center. We are in a time that knowledge is everywhere, beckoning. Knowledge is hanging at the tip of anything and everything that you want to open that has to do with communication, with the internet with all the mediums of communication we have the books and now especially with the internet knowledge is flying left right and center for anyone who cares to grab the knowledge to make their lives better but then we have also seen evidently that even though knowledge is flying left, right, and center for anyone to grab and make themselves a better human being, a lot of people are still wallowing in ignorance. They are wallowing in ignorance in a world that is fast changing, you know, with the speed of light. You begin to wonder, are these people from Mars? Or are these people living in Mars? Or are they in Jupiter? Are they not on planet Earth? Why they will still be in ignorance? So ladies and gentlemen, children of God, beloved ones of God, it is a known fact, a very known fact, that your tomorrow will become what you do today. Another known fact is that ignorance is not bliss ignorance is destructive another known fact is those who sits on the position of power tomorrow 
begins to work out their agenda today they begin to prepare themselves today am i communicating another known fact is that knowledge is not powerful it is the application of knowledge that is powerful am i communicating so the reason why a lot of people are ensnared are unfruitful is because they have not gotten the required knowledge to function in the area of their dream the reason that a lot of people are unfruitful is because they see knowledge they see that it is on the right but they are busy looking on the left the reason a lot of people are ensnared they are stagnated they are limited is because they refuse to get the required knowledge for them to operate in the areas of their dream the reason a lot of people are ensnared, hindered, imprisoned, and they are not going for, and they are not manifesting greatness, is because they have not been able to get the required knowledge that they need to function absolutely in the areas of their dream. Am I talking to someone? If you're getting me, say, uh-huh, uh-huh. So a lot of people tend to be frustrated. A lot of people tend to give up easily because, you know, the things they are pursuing are not bearing the fruits that they envisaged. That is why the Bible tells us in Proverbs 24 verse 10, If thou faint in the day of adversity, then thy strength is small. A lot of people, you know, are giving up easily because they are not doing what they are supposed to do because the fruit they are expecting is not coming forth. But if you do what you are supposed to do, you will not be limited. You will not be hindered. Which means also that if you apply knowledge, you know, adequately, you will not be troubled. And that scripture of that Proverbs 24 verse 10 is also telling us that the reason why a lot of people are ensnared is that when troubles trials and tribulations confront them they become confounded so a lot of people are confronted with problems that confound them because they do not understand how to confront the problems that confound them Am I communicating? So you will not be confounded when you are adequately equipped with knowledge to be able to confront the things that wants to confound you. Am I communicating this morning? Hear me, child of God. If you equip yourself with the adequate knowledge that you are supposed to have, then when troubles, trials, and tribulations confront you, you will not be confounded. Am I communicating? If you're getting me say uh-huh uh-huh i'm not hearing you but i know that you're hearing me so child of god as our anchor scripture have told us in hosea you know chapter 4 verse 6 especially the very first line say my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge one of the things you need to understand is that knowledge is ineludible everything that you need to do on the face of the earth any area that you require to be able to be great in you need knowledge in it no one goes to a farm without their holes and cutlasses and in this modern time no one you know goes to the farm without their tractors without their equipment without all the plowing machines and no one begins to enter the exam hall when they have not read their books otherwise you are going to fail and disgrace yourself and your family hear me child of god the reason why a lot of people are functioning below standard is because they've not taken out time to understudy and get in information required for their greatness they are not manifesting the way they should manifest because they are not 
properly equipped. Hear me, when you are properly equipped, then you become a wonder to your world. Hear me, child of God, the reason why people are not doing well is because they have not taken out time to do what they are supposed to do. Hear me, child of God. You see, faith to commit, the Bible tells us, by hearing, the meaning of that is faith. That word, faith, means the belief that you will be able to do something. That you trust absolutely in something. So faith coming, the Bible tells us, by hearing. And that word hearing is a present continuous tense. Which means you will hear and hear and hear again. The more you hear, the more you know. The more you know, the more you want to know. And as you know it and as you hear it, as you make constant effort to hear and to know what you have heard, what you have heard rather, will be you know stuck in your memory and you will not forget so god is telling us that we need to acquire knowledge we need to be able to seek knowledge we need to be able to find knowledge we need to search for knowledge in the area that we are looking for us to be great in but you see there's something that you know we have found out you see a lot of people do not do what they are supposed to do the Bible tells us in the book of James, it says, faith without works is dead. Am I communicating here now? So what that scripture is trying to tell us in the book of James, that faith without works is dead, meaning that if you believe that you want to be a doctor, but you don't do nothing about studying and preparing to be a doctor. Your faith is useless. You cannot become a doctor by wishing. You become a doctor by going to school, by studying. Am I communicating? If you do not put in the necessary required action before you are able to get, you know, profit, nothing will happen. If you don't put a seed in the ground, nothing will germinate. Am I communicating here, child of God? So most of the time, people are incapacitated because they say, all right, God, you know, I'm going to pray for one or two, three, four hours. And then God, I'm going to give up and leave the rest in your hand so that you can do the remaining. You see, the great man of God, our father, Bishop, you know, Oyedepo, David Oyedepo, is opined to have said, any faith that leaves everything in the hands of God is an irresponsible Christianity. Meaning that God has done everything that he needs to do. You cannot say, okay, God, you do the rest. God, I am tired. God, I am weak. Just like some people say, why don't God just, you know, rain down maize or rain down fish or rain down cow, you know, from the heavens or rain down their glory or rain down clothes from heaven. No, my brother, no, my sister, it doesn't work like that because you are a human being. You are made in the image of God. You carry the DNA of God. You are a co-hair, my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. You are a co-hair with God Almighty. You are a co-hair with our Lord Jesus Christ. So you are supposed to also put your hand on the plow. So you are supposed to do something because you're not an imbecile. It's an imbecile that will sit still and that will not be able to do anything that doesn't know what to do. Because you're an imbecile, you're not an imbecile. You are also supposed to move. You're meant to contribute your own quarter into your glorious future. Because God has done his best, now you're supposed to do your best. That is why you have to keep praying. That is why you have to keep pushing. That is why you don't give up because you're not an imbecile. You are not paralyzed. You are not physically paralyzed. Neither are you spiritually paralyzed. You need to move also and do something. Add something to your quota. Am I communicating here? That is why, you see, a lot of people, for instance, if you are in your father's house, in your mother's house, 
you cannot sit idle without contributing you have to also clean the house and if you're still living under your parents roof and you start to work then you must bring a certain amount of your salary you know or your earnings to add to the upkeep of the house and for the provisions of things in the house you cannot be living under your parents roof even if it's their own personal house you must contribute to the painting of the house you must contribute to you know uh, what you call it changing of the roof of the house you must contribute you know to ensuring that the house is put in order and food items are bought and you're also helping in the electricity bill you cannot be sitting down there in the house as a paralyzed human being that is why the moment a child becomes an adult begins to work if you are not contributing to the house your parents will push you out so now in the kingdom of God, as a child of God in this world, you are also meant to contribute your own quota. You cannot say, oh, God has, you know, finished the work. God should continue to do the work and you do nothing. You must add your own quota to becoming great. So you see, knowledge is ineludible, whether you like it or not. Now hear me, child of God. One of the things we need to understand is that the moment you gather the required knowledge, you will begin to function in the area that you're supposed to function effectively. Hear me, child of God, what God is trying to tell you and I this morning from the scripture, the anchor scripture that we have read, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. I want to ask you this morning because that is what the Holy Spirit says I shall ask you. You are planning and plotting to be a doctor, to have your, you know, your degree, you know, as a doctor like myself. What plans have you put in place? How have you taken out time to study and to prepare? You are planning to be a mother. What books have you read? What preparations have you been preparing? What have you learned about the changes that will occur in the body of a lady when she gets pregnant? What books have you read concerning motherhood? You are a man. You want to get married. What books have you read in terms of preparing yourself to becoming a husband? To becoming a good lover to your wife? What books have you read on becoming a father? What plans have you put in place to ensure that you nurture your children well when they come forth? Are you strongly equipped as a Christian? Are you spiritually fortified? Hear me, child of God. For those of us who are scholars, we know that when we are in school, in higher schools, even from nursery these days, they give every student a project to carry out and in trying to carry out this project what you do is to gather resources and materials and everything that will help you to have an in-depth knowledge of the subject or the topic that you have been given and now for you to acquire your doctorate degree that like i have you have to do your dissertation so if you don't have your dissertation presented you will not be able to be conferred with your doctorate degree and i ask you again this morning what areas have you prepared yourself in what materials have you gathered in what resources have you been gathering in concerning what you're pursuing yes you are a businesswoman yes you're a businessman what books have you read in terms of equipping yourself so that you can be great and manifest mightily in that area that you want to pursue you. Yes, you want to be an actress. What books have you read? What things have you equipped yourself with? What knowledge have you gotten? Because child of God, whether you like it or not, knowledge is ineludible in every area that we want to pursue. So the first thing that you are supposed to do as a child of God, those who want to manifest, is to be able to go for to the scripture to seek the word of God concerning the area that you want to manifest in, the area that you want to be great in. When you get the word, for instance, you know that you are supposed to be married and you are not married. What do you do? You go to the Bible, you go to the word of God, begin to look for the scriptures that will equip you to pray accordingly. 
and you are a mother to be you go to the scriptures and begin to look for the scriptures that will ensure that you're protected while you are pregnant when you are also about to get married you begin to look for the scriptures to protect your wedding preparations and marriage eventually the child of god in any area that you are looking forward to functioning in greatly what do you do you look for resources and materials to be able to function in them effectively child of god you see my people perish for lack of knowledge as the word of god have told us is because they have refused to understand that knowledge is ineludible everything that we need in this world operates around knowledge it's in knowledge it's buried in knowledge and can only function in knowledge hear me there is no business that you want to do you want to become a baker if you are not knowledgeable, if you are not, you know, going to school or you're not getting some kind of certificate course concerning that thing, my dear brother, my dear sister, you will fail woefully. And as a child of God, for those of you who wake up and think they want to carry the toga of a woman of God or a man of God, like sometimes we are seeing on the internet now, a lot of people are making mockery of themselves and not making mockery of God. They have not gone through Bible college, they have not gone through any formal training, and they are not submitting to any man or woman of God. They are not even consistent in church. They don't even know the church protocols. They don't even know the church order. They don't belong to any department in church and they wake up one day and they think they want to carry the bible and begin to preach man you are a man most, most miserable you're a woman most miserable no one can mock god hear me child of god for every area that you want to function in you must be thoroughly equipped in it you must get the required knowledge so that you can be able to function great in it because the reason that you are not bearing fruit it's because you don't have the adequate knowledge. You don't have the required knowledge. Hear me, child of God. Faith works. Faith works. Prayer works. After you have fated, after you have prayed, you need to put plans in place. That plan means that you will look for resources and materials. And when you get the materials, you begin to consume it. You begin to eat it. You begin to divulge it. You begin to, you know, feel yourself with it. When you have filled yourself with it, you will be full. And when you are full, you will want to burst out and give to your generation. Remember what the word of God says in Romans 8 19. He said, I want to read it out clearly and very wonderfully. Look at Romans 8 19. He says, For the endless expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation. Of the sons of God when you are equipped and you are now overflowing with knowledge that has been bequeathed unto you because you have resorted to seats at the feet of God because you have also gone ahead to equip yourself with their knowledge necessary for your greatness you will begin to manifest you will become a wonder to your world and you will see that your world has been waiting for you to birth a greatness that will save them because you see the reason God wants us to be like him why he says we are gods is that we can begin to function expressly to be the eyes of our generation to be the legs of our generation to be the arms of our generation to be able to bring solution to the problems of our world excuse me to bring solution to our world that's why we need 
to understand the scripture. See, for the earnest expectation of the creature, of the world, of the creatures in the world, of your society, of your family, of your friends, and even your enemies. They are waiting for you to manifest. How do you manifest when you have turned your back against knowledge? How do you manifest and showcase greatness when you have turned around and refused to understand that knowledge is ineludible? Child of God, whether you like it or not, you cannot do anything wonderfully. You cannot do anything marvelously. You cannot do anything greatly without the required knowledge. That is why you must make an effort today to get knowledge. In that area that you're functioning in, if you have to go back to school, then you should go back to school. Sometimes you may not have to go to a formal institution. You can attend online universities. You can attend part-time studies in a university that is near you or a polytechnic that is near you. You can, you know, get certificate courses into the things that you want to do. Make inquiries so that you can function effectively in them. Hear me, child of God. You need to understand one thing. Until you are full with knowledge, you cannot manifest for your society to benefit from you. And you'll be of no use to your society. Hear me, child of God. The word of God says in Psalm 102 verse 13, it says, the time to favor Zion is here. Yeah, the time to favor her has come. Join me this morning and say, my Lord and my God, this is the time that I need to manifest. This is the time that I need to be favored. This is the time for you to equip me with your knowledge. This is the time for you to equip me with the required knowledge. This is the time for you to equip me with your spirit. This is the time for you to give me the knowledge that I need so that I will be able to become a wonder to my society. This is the time to favor me, you care put your name there this is the time to favor grace this is the time to favor Masha. open your mouth and begin to say my father my fighter this is the time to favor me Tito life my father my fighter this is the time to favor me Obong. I think I just saw Obong. my Lord and my God this is the time that you need to favor me mightily open your mouth and say my Lord and my God I have not been functioning the way I should function because I never had the required knowledge. I never had the absolute knowledge that I need to function in the area that I am functioning in, in the area that I want to function in. In my business, I don't have the required knowledge. This is the time to favor me with the knowledge that I need. My father, my fighter, I cannot do nothing if you don't favor me with knowledge. My Lord and my God, I cannot be able to function and be a wonder to my generation. I cannot manifest. My society cannot gain from me. I cannot be a gain to my society when I am lacking in knowledge. My Lord and my God, give me knowledge because I've come to realize that knowledge is ineludible. My Father and my God, I need knowledge. I, t I ask you, Lord, give me the patience and the perseverance to go back to school. Give me the patience and the perseverance to understudy what I should know because the reason why I am functioning below standard is because I do not have the required knowledge. My Father and my God, I ask you this morning, favor me. Open my head. 
Open my brain. Open my heavens. Fill me with your knowledge. My Lord and my God, I cannot do well without the knowledge that is required. I cannot function well as a politician without the required knowledge. I cannot function well as a student without reading my books. I cannot carry out my project without knowledge. I cannot function and be able to write my dissertation to get my, you know, my, my doctorate degree if I don't function well, if I don't have the required knowledge. My Lord and my God, I will not be conferred with my doctorate degree if I am not able to, you know, present my dissertation. My Lord and my God, if I'm not able to do my project, I will not be able to come out out of my first degree. I will not be able to even finish my master's. My Lord and my God, I need knowledge. I need strength. I need your grace. For you have said that your grace is sufficient for them. My Lord and my God, fill me with your grace this morning. Say, my father, my fighter, this morning, O Lord, show me a token for good, so that they that hate me may see that you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. That is the word of God in Psalm 87 verse 16. Say, Lord Jesus, comfort me this morning. Lord Jesus, come and help me. Fill me with power. Fill me with knowledge so that I will be able to function effectively in my area of authority. Say, Lord Jesus, I call upon you this morning. I cannot do what I am supposed to do well when I don't have the required resources. Help me today so that I begin to seek the materials, so I begin to read the books, so that I be able to study, so that I be able to empower myself, so that I can empower my generation. Open your mouth and say, my father, my fighter. Hear me, child of God. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Don't just be waiting for prophecy. Open your mouth and begin to pray. When you're not able to pray, then you are a weak Christian indeed. Open your mouth and say, my father, my fighter. This morning, this week, today I decree and declare that as I go forth, I will begin to seek knowledge. As I go forth, I will open my eyes of understanding and I'll be able to gather every material and every you know resource that I need to function effectively. I begin to study to becoming a better businesswoman. I begin to study to becoming a better contractor. I begin to study to becoming a better businessman. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Say, my father, my fighter. I will begin to study so that I can even be a good husband. I'll begin to study so I become a good sister. I begin to study so I'll be a good brother. I begin to study so I will be a good neighbor. I begin to study so I will be able to be a good Christian, an effective Christian, a functional Christian. Open your mouth and say, My father, my fighter, this morning I call upon you. Help me, Holy Spirit, because I cannot help myself. My Lord and my God, help me to feel myself with the knowledge that is required for me to function effectively because I have come to understand that knowledge is ineludible. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you this morning. My Father and my God, help me because you have said, study to show thyself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. As your word have said it in the book of Timothy, my Father and my God, from today I will study. From today I will seek knowledge. From today, I will go forth. I will look for materials. I will look for everything that I will need. I will listen to messages to equip myself so that I can manifest greatness. So that I'll be able to function effectively in the area that I am believing God for greatness. I am believing God to get married. Then I'm going to get the required scriptures. I am believing God to have a baby. I am God going to get the required information that will help me concerning being a good wife and being a good mother. My Lord and my God, I am going to get a required information to help me to be a good husband and be a good father. My Lord and my God, I cannot do nothing without you. Lord Jesus, help me. My Father and my God, help me. Help me, help me, help me. In Jesus' powerful name, amen and amen. I'm going to read out um, from the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 12. It says, for the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. The ground shall give her increase. And the heaven shall give their dew. And I will cause the remnant of these people to possess 
all these things. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I stand on the finished work of Jesus, wielding my apostolic sword this morning. I decree and declare as God Almighty has said in his word, your work shall be prosperous. Your business shall be prosperous. Your health shall be prosperous. Your education shall be prosperous. Your ministry shall be prosperous. Everything that you lay your hands on shall be prosperous. Your work will yield its increase. You will be promoted if you're seeking for promotion in your place of work. In your business, you shall be enlarged because that is what the word of God is trying to tell us here. It says the ground shall give her increase, which means that your work shall prosper you. You will get the required promotion. The salary increase that you've been asking, that you've been praying for, shall be given to you. Hear me, child of God. God is saying that the blessings of heaven shall be upon you. The dew of heaven shall fall upon you. Because, you know, when the dew falls upon, you know, the plants, there's freshness. Even when it does not rain. Yes, we are in the raining season now. But you can see otherwise, when it's not the raining season, the dew always falls to ensure that the vegetation do not dry off completely. So whether you are out and in of the raining season, of the time that you are not supposed to be blessed, God says you will be blessed. So in that your business, you will be blessed. In that your work, you will be blessed. In anything that you're doing, you will be blessed. Are you seeking for a contract? Today, God says, God will favor you. God will make his face to shine upon you. God will visit your employers. God will visit those who need to give you a job and put your personality in their mind and they will remember to call you to favor you and as you go forth today god will ensure that you will not be accidented you will not enter the transportation that has been marked to have an accident you will not die untimely and hear me the word of god says in the book of Haggai, chapter 2 verse 9 is that the glory of the later house shall be better than the former in this second half of the year the blessings that you're going to get, the open heavens that you're going to get, shall be better than what you got from January, February, March, April to June. What you're going to get in this month of July, August, September, October, November, and December shall be greater than what you have gotten in the first half of the year. The profit you made in your business, you're going to get double of it, times double, times double. It shall be multiplication, addition, and no subtraction in the second half of the year. In the second half of, year, of the year, your health will not fail. In the second half of the year, everything you are believing God for shall come to pass. And for those of us who are believing God, for their life partners, for their marriage partners, God will supernaturally connect you. For those of you who are sick in your body, God will supernaturally touch you and you will receive supernatural healing. My Father and my God will multiply the bread in your hand. You will not waste your resources. Your brother, your sisters will not bring you shame. Whatever that is causing you pain, God will take it away from you. In the name of Jesus. Hear me, child of God. The word of God says in the book of James, and I'm going to read out. James uh, Chapter 4, verse 7. And I'm reading now. It says, Submit yourselves. Therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Child of God, if you know you have not been living according to the way that pleases the Lord, it means that you have not submitted yourself to God. If you are always finding yourself doing things that are abhorrent, to the ways of God, to the ways that undermine your toga as a Christian, then you need to submit to God this morning. What it means is that you have not submitted to God and you're not resisting the devil. That is why you must constantly seek God's way. The moment you, know, the moment you seek God's way and the, you know, the time that you spend in the presence of God, his spirits and his presence and his power will begin to rub off on you. 
and you will find the need to sin, the need to commit things that are not in the way of God will slowly leave your body. Child of God, if you know that you've not given your life to God, which means you have not taken the life of God, and you have been living the way that is not pleasing to God, this is the moment for you to submit your life to God. Submit your life to God. Which means do everything that you're doing so that God will be pleased with you. So that even humanity will be pleased with you. Because when the ways of a man pleases the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. When you are no longer cursing, when you're no longer living in the ways that are bringing shame to the body of Christ, people will be proud of you. People will want to associate with you. Child of God, you want to renege of your old life now. You know that prior before now, you don't have the strength and will and you try but you don't, you know, can't give up on those sinful ways of living. You need the power of God to help you. Without the power of God, my dear brother, my dear sister, you can...